Hey Hilltop, Kaylin here with a, another round of devotionals. Uh, this month, we're going to focus on kingdom humility. Last month, we talked a lot about how love for one another can help build a kingdom that reconciles us one to another. But this month, we're going to talk about how humility is integral, so important to begin to address the issues, the cultural divisions of our time. So today, and in the weeks forward, we're going to be addressing issues of pride and be asking God through the scriptures for humility. Now, today we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 31, if you would read with me. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Paul's letter to the church in Corinth was written in response to their ongoing patterns of sin. These early believers were struggling with issues of pride, divisiveness, sexual immorality, and apathy. This portion of Paul's letter deals specifically with the prideful distinctions they had made amongst themselves. In fact, the Corinthians had become known for their differences, not their oneness in Christ. The ministries of Paul, Peter, Apollos, and even Jesus were being pitted against each other by those who sought to prove the theological and stylistic superiority of their camps. But Paul offers a sobering reminder to the spiritually prideful. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. All that you have, whether it be wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, or redemption, is not of your doing, but that of Christ. You see, the church of Corinth had overinflated their contribution to the kingdom of God. It's important to note that Paul confronts their pride before he ever addresses the divisions amongst them. One can subsequently assume that division and disunity are almost always a direct result of pride. There were factions in the church of Corinth because there was no humility in the church of Corinth. Their mistake was to assume that God chose them because of their wisdom, power, and nobility. But Paul quickly grounds them in reality. God chose them because they were in fact none of those things. He teaches them that God doesn't choose the impressive, but rather makes impressive those he chooses. The same can be said for us today. Now, with division and disunity wreaking havoc on the church, particularly along ethnic and racial lines, it would only be appropriate for us to ask the question, have we been prideful? This is an important question we need in order to address the root of our disunity. The American church, in some ways, has and continues to be a reflection of those Corinthian believers. How so? Well, pride, just like them, has made us vulnerable. Our inability to empathize is a result of pride. Our quarreling, is a result of pride. Our blindness to the beauty of other cultures, guess what, is the result of pride. Furthermore, our generations long agreement with white supremacy could not have occurred to a humble people. But there is good news. The church can rejoice that where a spirit of pride has produced division, a spirit of humility will certainly produce the wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption of Christ. Let's pray. Jesus, we acknowledge in our hearts that we have been boastful, that we've addressed the issues of our age, the toxicity in our culture, not with humility, but with pride. God, we ask that by your spirit, you would intervene and you would address the places that we've thought more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would send messengers just like Paul to remind the church in America today 
that we are not impressive in our own ways or in our own wisdom, but we're made impressive because we belong to Christ. Lord, help us to heal the wounds of division and disunity in our age and in our society by making your church, your people, a humble people, those that would reject pride at every corner and would embrace a lowliness of spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.